So thank you, everybody, for being here today. So this is, this is like the very first talk after the lunch break. We will try to do our best to keep you guys awake. So a brief introduction about us. My name is Federico Valentini, and I am currently leading the threat intelligence, intelligence team and incident response at Clify. And with me today, there is Alessandro Strino, which Hi, is everybody. another um, malware analyst that uh, uh, work inside our threat intelligence uh, team. So we are both from uh, this company called Clify, which is an Italian uh, company, and we provide solution for uh, anti-fraud uh, teams, uh, uh, typically working in bank institutions as well, for uh, managing uh, in real time uh, fraud uh, threats and detection in the from, the from the client side. So maybe you already seen this name, uh, maybe behind like technical analysis uh, related to Android bank intrusion as well. We perform a, a couple of uh, research in the last through, uh, two years and uh, also discovering a new uh, bank intrusion uh, such as a Sharkbot, T-Bone and a Revive, to give you a couple of examples. But this is our, like, let's say, very first time that we public discuss uh, one of our uh, investigation uh, based on Windows threats. So, why we are here today? We are talking about uh, banking fraud operation, right? So, technically, I mean, historically, uh, banking fraud operation are very tied to this concept called web inject. I don't know if, uh, how many of you guys are already familiar with the concept? Please, uh, awesome. So, you can consider, let's say, uh, web inject, the latest piece, uh, of malicious code leveraged by threat actor for, for example, executing an authorizing payment, or for example, intercepting valid banking credential or valid, valid two-factor authentication code as well. So uh, this talk is um, not, let's say, a more classic uh, reversing engineering or malware analysis uh, talk. It will be more like telling you a story a story behind uh, specific threat groups that we started um, analyzing back in 2018. So this is a, the, the result of this, uh, of our investigation is uh, an invest investigation long four years, starting back to in uh, 2018. And this is our uh, very first time that we publicly disclose our, um, go, uh, our findings. Uh, consider that during the last uh, year, in 2022, we already uh, share all of, uh, of our findings for, uh, with uh, uh, impacted organization, impacted banking institution, law enforcement, and also reputable uh, charts as well. So, starting from 2018, uh, we start tracking a uh, specific threat actor, which appears to operate uh, um, inside the Italian uh, landscape. And the main goal of this uh, threat actor was to in fact, as much as possible, Windows Workstation inside corporate network. But not all the uh, Windows Workstation uh, that you can possibly find inside a corporate network, but only the corporate machine which uh, has been used for uh, direct access to bank account. And their main goal is try to alter legit legitimate transaction performed by the victim. And they uh, try to perform this, uh, to achieve this goal uh, with the usage of this specific web inject kit, which we dubbed uh, as Driven back in 2018. Um, this uh, web inject kit has these specific types of scenario, uh, which is called ATS or Automatic Transfer System, which consists in not uh, um, extracting um, like valid credential or two-factor authentication code, but this type of web inject is waiting that a victim is uh, currently logging into their corporate banking accounts, and the, uh, the web inject is activating when the actual uh, victim is trying to insert a legitimate bank banking transfer. So the web inject kit will try to hijack the payment, so the, the payment will be rotated to another banking banking account, which is typically controlled uh, directly or uh, indirectly by the threat group itself. And another important thing here is that uh, we found some high correlation between this driven operation starting back in 2018 and this threat group um, disclosed by Proofpoint in 2018 as well, which is called TA554. So a couple of numbers here. Threat actors uh, appear to be interested in um, specific 
uh, amounts of transactions. So as you can see here, consider that we are talking about corporate environment, you can consider this range of amount like modest types of amount. So they are not quite interesting, very high types of uh, banking transac transactions is from a money laundering perspective is uh, some sort of uh, different, completely different job. Another important thing is that during 2021 and 22, we were able to uh, extract uh, the majority of banking uh, of uh, money mule network that is under the control by this threat group, and we found more than uh, 1,400 different bank accounts controlled by the group. Uh, during a specific wave of attacks uh, happening in uh, 2021 in July, uh, we found that uh, during a, a specific wave of, of attack, the threat, uh, threat actor were able to infect more than uh, 1,500 different uh, um, uh, customer of a single uh, banking institution. And uh, another, uh, let's say, interesting thing that uh, um, we were able also to uh, intercept two extortion attempts performed by the threat actor itself, and the singularity of this uh, extortion attempt is that they like uh, try to put the ransom request uh, in directly inside into the web inchat code, which is, let's say, kind of weird, I think, because, uh, I mean, our hypothesis here is that probably during this specific period of time, threat actor like notice that someone here is uh, like constantly monitoring their new payload as well. So we will get into more detail later with Alessandro here. So this is like a high level overview about all the different stages that we were able to extract during our investigation. So it all begins with a Malspan campaign. You will see this, I think, weird uh, name called PEC. We will get into uh, some details later. And uh, through this mail spam, the, the threat group tried to distribute the, the very first piece of malware component, which is called Sload. Sload is a, a well-known PowerShell, uh, PowerShell uh, downloader, and they use their modules for deeply inspecting all the botnet, all the bots inside their botnet for like building up a more resilient and robust types of botnets. So after S load, they're retrieving all the interesting bots and push the very next uh, piece of uh, malware, which is called Driban, a very known uh, bank in Trojan, and use the man in the browser capabilities of Driban for injecting this web inject kit called Driban for hijacking in real time legitimate payments. And the very last piece uh, or stage is related to the money laundering operation. So, uh, we will see uh, uh, some details later with Alessandro, but during our investigation, we were also able to get some insight from their, one of their internal panel for managing all their like, complex types of money mule networks. So we started with the very first stage, which is this PEC mass spam. I mean, PEC, PEC emails is some sort of, uh, I think it's an Italian thing only. Uh, uh, PEC stands for certified email. And uh, you can, I mean, for the sake of this, uh, of this talk, you can consider PEC emails just like standard email, okay? This is um, some sort of legal uh, trust behind it. So uh, PEC email in Italy uh, try to guarantee the legal certainty of a sender identity. And uh, uh, back in the days, we started uh, questioning ourselves of why this threat group uh, is using these specific types of email for distributing their, their first stage of infection, which is not, let's say, quite common in Italy. See, like structure, structure malware campaign behind PAC emails. And we started um, trying to see some of the, or I mean, connecting some of the dots behind it. So, as I said before, the very first goal of this uh, threat, uh, threat group is try to infect the machine inside corporate network. And guess what? PEC emails is very used inside corporate networks. And also, this name of certified emails, in, uh, from, I mean, from an Italian citizen perspective, is giving this, let's say, false sense of security. And also, it happened that PEC email are very less monitored than traditional email. And at the same time, According to Italian laws, PEC email must always be delivered. I mean, this is not actually true. They perform some, let's say, extension check. So, for example, if I type to attach a .exe file in the attachment, you're probably, okay, you cannot do that. But, I mean, very easy check to bypass. 
this is uh, an example of one of their uh, email templates used by the group. So as you can see, this, uh, uh, this is a pretty simple email. They are trying to fake in some, some sort of government uh, communication. And uh, all the email typically have a .zip file for attachment. And um, if I am a victim, I try to open up this uh, uh, zip attachment and find these three files. So for example, I can start with the PDF one, try to open it, and OK, it's corrupted. Moving to the next one, which is a JPEG one, I can try to open it, and this is corru corrupted as well. So if the victim opens up the third file, which is, as you can see, a .vsf file, this routine will start actually, uh, it, it is an SLOT downloader, so it will perform a get request from, uh, to a, speci a specific uh, command and control infrastructure and retrieving back the core module of SLOT. Another important thing is uh, authors here try to um, create like one, team, uh, one timeline download. So if you receive a potential e email like that and you already clicked into the uh, SLOT downloader, you were not able to retrieve the same payload as well. So we are moving from pack email to SLOT. SLOT, as I said before, is a, let's say, pretty known and analyzed uh, piece of malware. It's a PowerShell-based uh, loader. Um, I mean, we, we will uh, not give in into uh, much details about it. There are um, out there a lot of technical analysis. I, uh, if I remember correctly, also Microsoft uh, provides two uh, interesting blog posts describing all the internals and blah, blah, blah. So for the sake of this uh, talk, uh, um, you, can, you can see that Sload like abuse uh, a lot of uh, Windows utilities for staying under the line. So, for example, for command and control uh, communication, they abuse the bits, the bits job protocol, and uh, they have like pretty interesting uh, recon feature that uh, has been used leveraged by the threat actor itself. So they can exfiltrate workstation data, for example, computer name, process list, um, network details, etc. They can also take screenshots as well from the infected machine, uh, check mailbox data, and also VPN types of file. But the point here is that, I mean, Haslot is a pretty, uh, let's say, straightforward types of malware, so it's very easy to understand all the different functionality, functionalities, but it's not, uh, I mean, in these types of, in these, um, Infection is not about uh, what feature ha SLOT ha has, but it's more like the timing. So, uh, threat actors here takes a lot of time for understanding and building up the, the, the botnet before getting into the final payload, which is, as I said before, run it. So during the time that can lead like days or even weeks, they continue enrichment, enrichment uh, their bots and try to understand and uh, identify like suspicious bots, for example, uh, sandboxes or uh, like curious researchers and drop everything from, uh, from now on. So as I said before, their goal is in fact in a corporate w w Windows workstation. But uh, not only, um, and not all the Windows workstation, workstation inside, inside corporate network, but only the machine which has uh, actually um, real access to banking portal as well. So they build up a simple routine, which is uh, some sort of second stage payload, uh, we, and they distribute uh, and execute uh, via SLOT as well. So this simple payload is basically check um, list of hard-coded corporate banking portals against the DNS cache of the Windows machine. So, and they send back the result to the command and control as well. So now, um, threat actors have basically an idea of which uh, and how many uh, potential, potential victims they have under their control. And if you, one of those, you will see the, like the, the actual final payload which consists in a packed uh, PowerShell payload, and if you try to unpack it, you will find like a, uh, some sort of custom version of a open source project called PowerSploit, and they, the threat actor, modify a module of this uh, open source project for a, a reflective injecting a DLL into a remote process. And the, the, the DLL will, uh, was actually embedded into this payload as well, and as you can see, they put out um, the 32-bit version and 64-bit version of the RAMIT core bank intrusion. 
which give us the possibility to go to the next stage, which is Runmit. Runmit is a, a very old um, known bank in Trojan. It emerged back in 2010, but initially they have uh, they didn't have like bank in Trojan capabilities. It act as a worm, and uh, but starting from um, 2016, I guess they started in, um, insert like leaking leaked uh, part of the source code of Zeus, which uh, was uh, one of uh, the most notorious bank intrusion back in the days. And uh, another important thing behind running it is that uh, it survived in 2015 to a major disruption plan operated by Europol uh, itself. And after that, they continue to improve the main functionality. So they add new tactics and experimenting also new infection chain as well. This is like some sort of main feature behind Runnit. As I said before, he have a lot of uh, advanced vision uh, mechanisms and techniques. Uh, they have embedded on DGA algorithm form, uh, being more robust to server takedowns. And uh, the, um, the, the more important thing about Runnit here is, uh, is that he have like the, one of the most advanced many the browser techniques out there that works with more modern browser as well, such as Chrome, Firefox, or Internet Edge. And the, the point behind the strategy of this group is to like try to uh, have a um, let's say a completely automatic fraud approach. So they didn't like try to perform also social engineering attempt to victim, try for example with a fake call, with a fake banking operation. But they, they want to like try to scaling uh, as much as they can their operation with a completely automatic approach. And for doing that they build up this uh, web inject kit that we are going to show you today and also like custom method methods uh, for example the possibility to alter in real time uh, banking transfer receipt which is typically common for for example corporate i perform a new banking transfer authorize it and after the uh, th this new banking transfer i try to uh, print out the pdf for the invoice for example which typically contain like banking details about the transaction so getting into more details, this is a, uh, we were talking about the, set, the web inject setup adopted by Driban. So they starting insert web inject back in 2016, and they basically follow in the stand standard Zeus uh, types of format. But for the very first time, Vitali in 2018, like discovered the very, uh, si the very first sig significant change behind their uh, web inject configuration. So they actually moving from the Zeus uh, traditional one to a Lua coded uh, new one, which is still adopted nowadays, according to our analysis. And uh, another important thing is that they also use some sort of hybrid approach regarding the web inject payload. As you can see is, uh, here in this image, this is one of their uh, we call them local injects because if you like getting the hands into the Runnit binary and you try to dump out uh, the configuration module, uh, the configuration, the web inject configuration, you can actually see the payload, but you cannot see all the web inject pay payload because most, some of them, which are like the most interesting one for our ana analysis, for example, such as the ATS core module or money mule details are stored in a, another uh, completely dedicated common and control infrastructure and retrieve in real time once needed. And moving this uh, web inject into, uh, let's say, the, in a common and control infrastructure, so to centralize them in the, on the server side, change some sort of the game's rules. So um, web inject here are served in real time to a dedicated common and control infrastructure, as I said before. And this, uh, uh, this is performed because um, you can consider the uh, ATS module or money mute details as one of the most uh, expensive assets for the threat group itself and also guarantee to the group to perform some sort of continuous web inject development without, for example, pushing new configuration to the entire button as well. And at the same time, I mean, having these types of continuous web inject uh, development is some sort of 24-7 job. Another important uh, things in this story is that during 2021, uh, 
since our position, like working with banking institutions and try to connect in dots between like malware capabilities and also the real impact of those, uh, of the, of those uh, threats, we identified that threat group started um, creating legitimate account inside the corporate banking that they are targeting back in the days. So this attack, uh, this, this account was uh, run directly by the threat group itself and used them for like debug, debugging purposes. So for example, consider that a specific uh, corporate banking institution tried to put some countermeasure inside their, their actual uh, website and uh, like try to uh, stop the, all the functionality of the ATS routine from the web inject. They open up their legitimate uh, accounts and try to use it for understanding what are the countermeasures put in place by banks and try to create a new variant of the web inject, try to bypass them as well. So this is some sort of uh, debugging purposes, as I said before. So they use this for like testing all the new variants as well with, uh, before like putting the new code in production to the entire botnet. But uh, Let's say, let, let me give you an example. You, as a threat actor, you have access to one of the most advanced banking trojan out there, for example, Runnit. You also have like, the possibility to use one of the most advances, advanced ATS web inject kit, for example, Driven. But you're still missing one important thing for like, ensuring that your fraud operation scale very well, which is trying to maintain the victim unaware before a fraud attempt, because I mean, in European area, banking transfer could require up to two days for actual, actual getting executed. And threat actors need to maintain the victim unaware of what happened before. So they put in place a couple of interesting solutions here. So they use some parts of their web inject kit code for, um, in real time, try to alter all the currencies of the money mule detail, which can pop up inside the, the, the banking portal, and try to um, change and retrieving the original uh, data that were inserted by the victim itself. And another interesting thing is that threat actor here build up an entire custom function for altering the PDF document generated by the bank itself. Because, yeah, typically those documents contain money mule, uh, could contain uh, money mule uh, transaction summary information, so they're trying to removing or changing in real time when the user requesting those documents. So, I will this to you, Ale. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I think you're still awake, uh, and I hope I will try to keep awake, too. So, uh, in this part of the presentation, we are going to see some solution that these guys uh, find out to solve their challenges. So, the first one is to uh, perform a fully automated uh, approach uh, on the fraud and also to hide their uh, um, operation as much as possible. So, the first things that we are going to see here is the real-time PDF tampering. So uh, let's suppose you are a Ramnik victim. So in this case, all your connections are well monitored and of course also your bank connection. So let's suppose that you are trying to download uh, an invoice of your bank transfer. So the information are actually uh, catched by the Ramnik module and sent back to the command and control. When uh, the command and control received this information, it check if your transaction is, uh, let's call it a fraud list. So it's uh, actually its database. If your connection is, uh, sorry, the transaction is not in the database, the bot is instructed to forward all the connection back to the bank. Otherwise, uh, the bot is, um, actually instructed to uh, contact uh, an API, also on the command and control, passing specific parameters related to uh, the transaction. So in this case, we can see that uh, this module is built uh, with a PHP, and we can see here a few parameters. In the orange box, we can see that we have the bot ID, and the red box represents the mule information uh, related to the fraud, and uh, the green one represents actually the original pay issued by the users. So, 
uh, I don't know if some of you can, you know, spoil that there is something missing here, because as Federico said, uh, they attacked more than one bank. So in this case, they need to also understand uh, which template it's used for the specific transaction. And as I said, they monitor all requests to the bank, and they are capable to, of course, analyze the uh, HTTP request and uh, refer uh, parameters. So uh, with a kind of regular expression, they ex uh, extract uh, the bank and create uh, a Python script that will change this information. So you on the command and control server, you will have a folder for each bot, and uh, each folder contains two files plus the uh, uh, Python script. These two files, one represents the actual invoice issued by the bank and contains the information to, uh, related to the money mule, and the other file is actually the one altered by uh, uh, the threat actors. And this is our result. I, I don't know if it's big enough to, to, to understand that uh, there is actually uh, the same data on, uh, on, uh, on this invoice. The, just the one thing that changes is related to uh, the mule account and the information about the original pay. Well, actually, this is a kind of uh, breakthrough uh, functionality because um, I don't know if any one of you uh, checks uh, the metadata within the, an invoice when uh, you perform a, a bank transfer. So uh, I can assure you that this gave to a uh, fraud department or the banks a uh, few months of headache to, to understand. And um, uh, of course, it's, um, let me say, um, it's like you, you can share this information with uh, the payee. So you, when receive this kind of piece of paper, let's say, uh, you can share with the payee and there is no need for you to uh, come back and check if the transaction is okay. You just wait for the time required for, to, to complete the the, um, the transaction, and this of course lead to a fraud. So, uh, just a quick advice, sometimes it's good to check for metadata also, yeah. But anyway, uh, we also started to call about uh, Driban that solved the other part of the, the challenge that was to uh, avoid performing social engineering, and so the way they tried to uh, provide a full automated approach to the fraud. So, uh, Driban, uh, it's called in this way because it's a merge of Dropper plus uh, international bank transfer uh, uh, bank uh, account number and it's also the name of the variable that you can see uh, on screen there. It has been discovered uh, in uh, 2018 and 2019. It's completely written in uh, JavaScript and it's of course, uh, uh, it's uh, also equipped with a uh, ATS module, so automatic transfer system module that swap the information when uh, you know um, a user try to perform a bank transfer. So it's not magic actually. The web injection kit works when the user try to uh, perform a transaction. So it's also required by user to do something. We have divided uh, Driban uh, in uh, three main modules. The first one is the mule configuration, and it's up there. Uh, in, the, in the red box, you see the uh, bank account number related to the money mule. Uh, actually, in this campaign, or in this, uh, in this snippet code, we have two uh, mule active. But uh, another parameter that is also important for us is the minimum and the maximum uh, numbers because these are the uh, money that a specific mule can handle. Then also uh, we have divided uh, in other two pieces that is uh, the ATS uh, module engine and the visualization module that is going to uh, change the information when a fraud uh, happens. But before going deep uh, with this module, I would like to give you a timeline just to 
uh, recap the history of this web injection kit. So uh, when it was discovered in 2018, uh, it didn't have any kind of, uh, let me say, polymorphic code. Uh, it was almost plain text. Then we started to see that uh, we ha um, most of the mule networks belongs to Italy, but actually probably uh, they started to um, use this mule because it was the target country at the moment. And then we started to see a few changes, probably as a countermeasures uh, uh, to avoid detection system deployed by banks. So we started to see polymorphic code and also um, a quite strange, uh, let me say, paradigm that we saw. Uh, it was an attempt of extortion uh, in Bitcoin. Uh, so they tried to um, find, um, uh, send messages to banks or people that were monitoring their activity. So the, um, this history was uh, divided in uh, three different waves and also represent the intensity of the activity uh, related to Driban. So the peak was reached in uh, September 2021 and the timeline goes uh, until July 2022. So just keep in mind because it will become handy in a few slides. So let's have a look at the, the ATS engine module. I have um, divided it uh, in uh, three boxes and I've also numbered it to make it uh, as clear as possible. So in the orange bo uh, box we see that uh, they hook uh, a button. In this case uh, the button is used to send information uh, about uh, the transaction so from the user to the bank. The second box, the yellow one, uh, is related to the money mule, uh, um, let me say, amount of money that is capable to handle. So in this case, they are going to check if the, the transaction that is going to be performed by the user uh, could be swapped in somehow. So if so, if the range that is going to be paid by the user is within the range handled by the mule, they are going to swap this information, changing the bank account number and also the name of the pay. If everything goes well, uh, there is also another challenge that they need to overcome. Because of the PSD2 regulation, banks need to provide information uh, about the transaction before a user uh, are going to authorize it. So in this case, they try to hide the information in background and also substitute additional uh, information that uh, in this case pop up uh, from uh, in this page. Well, a um, few uh, evading um, techniques here are the polymorphic code so they started to scram a few variables. Um, we have also some string encoding and string splitting. Uh, it seems quite easy uh, countermeasures, but they actually work well because when you inject code in a page and you need to find out where this code is, so uh, anytime they apply this kind of countermeasures, uh, bank and monitoring system had to find out where this piece of code was hiding. So uh, just to conclude this part, I would like to also I like this uh, extortion attempt. It's um, a strange and strange paradigm, let me say, because uh, um, web injection are issued for uh, users. So um, the user should be uh, the victim of this kind of, uh, of, of web injection. Uh, but uh, probably they started to understand that something was going on behind uh, behind the bank department. So uh, the countermeasures deployed uh, started to um, fight, uh, change, uh, challenge them in a good way, and probably it was uh, an attempt to uh, you know perform a different type of cash out. Then uh, we are going to have a look at the money laundering uh, part. Uh, 
Uh, as Federico said, we had a chance to see um, their uh, control panel related to the web injection kit. So we were capable to extract few information from the panel and also thanks also to the um, forefront position for Clify uh, with banks. So we were capable to see also transaction. So this is actually the main uh, dashboard of the panel. Uh, we can see here that the um, campaign are structured in, uh, in Wix and each Wix contain one or multiple mules. There is also, uh, you see in the, in the box on the left, uh, weekly statistics. So they keep monitoring if uh, they were capable to steal, uh, uh, to reach the goal for the week. And we also have the amount range, the one that I told you before about the swap payments, and also a comment line for operators to uh, probably exchange information about the specific uh, uh, campaign. But another interesting stuff that we were capable to see is uh, also uh, what is called a stop list. In this case, this is a quite useful um, mechanism in order to avoid, uh, um, to disrupt their own botnet. So in this case, they avoid also to give away for free the core information related to the web inject. So in this case, if you are put in the blacklist, you won't receive any uh, payloads related to Dribbble, so you won't be able to see any kind of injection. So you are put in this list if uh, an attempt or fraud happen to your computer. So, and you are in this list for, uh, let me say, 30 days more or less. This is a, a good value actually, uh, because uh, doing an action like that uh, avoid also you to um, start new campaign, malspam campaign, especially when you are reaching the peak of your infection, so you are putting yourself under a kind of magnifying glass. So this is a good strategy also to avoid uh, detection. And uh, another important thing that we were capable to see is also the cash flow. Uh, of course, uh, we were capable to see that most of the money uh, goes to the Western Europe, but the important things here is the, um, the first transfer. So the Monimule network were located in Italy, and of course there is a reason here, because when you do a bank transfer, and when you do um, a bank transfer in the same country or also in the same institution, you don't need to provide a lot of information. Probably you just do the transfer without any problem. And since they do not have any kind of social engineering um, operators behind the frauds, they have to uh, maximize the income and avoid any technical issue. And of course, when you do uh, especially, uh, let me say, bank transfer, an international bank transfer, you also um, in somehow put um, a red flag uh, on your records, so probably even the department fraud will be alerted by uh, this kind of stuff. So before concluding, uh, I would like to show you a few numbers that uh, we were capable to collect from this guy. Uh, so. It's actually a good or bad business model. So we are going to see uh, this kind of fraud also in the future. Uh, probably the answer is yes, because they were capable to steal around 50 million from victims. And uh, they were capable also to uh, infect one or 200% population of a specific bank, uh, bank institution. If we think uh, that one of these uh, institutions could have more than uh, you know, 10 millions of customers, it's easy to spot that they were capable to have 100,000, 200,000 victims in their, their botnet. However, I told you uh, that July 2022, it was an important date uh, because of course, uh, some of you probably will be curious about today and uh, 
Today, we can say that we have no remnant uh, and driven fraud since July 2022. And most of the bots have been identified and also disarmed thanks to the struggle of bank institution. And of course, Mule Network has been uh, identified and information has been shared with law enforcement and other institutions. Uh, this concludes the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hello, thank you for the presentation. You said uh, that uh, they managed to extract around 50 million from the victims, but your slide said that they tried. Um, so how much damage was caused financially? I mean, we cannot like uh, get into detail since uh, this is not uh, an information that we can like verify. They, they, the right information that they try to uh, like cash out over 50 million dollars, but we don't, we didn't have like the position for uh, understand which, what, which part of their they were actually like uh, being stolen from the victim. Over there. Hello and uh, thank you. I have a question about the PDF interception phase. Is this a case for better training with uh, signed certificates uh, for PDFs for employees or to make at least the malware more um, involved if it has to also um, exchange a PDF or attack the PDF um, locally when it's digitally signed? You wanna get in? Uh, but I mean, they. As far as we can see, uh, like b banking institution doesn't like sign document or blah blah blah. You you will receive like a very simple PDF. So the point is, when the PDF came back from the banking institution backend to the client, they intercept the PDF file, send back to their common and control infrastructure, and with a Python routine, which is called PDF Redactor. Yes. I think it's open source and uh, publicly serviceable on GitHub. Uh, they uh, actually perform a, um, a script uh, over it and produce a new one, which is then sent back to the victim. So the victim will like see only the altered one. I don't know if you, if I get the question. But if that PDF were to be signed, the initial created one, you can't just alter it, right? This because is not signed. Yeah, but if it were. I don't get the, uh, uh, the yeah. point. I don't get the point, yeah. If, if the bank signs the PDF, uh -huh. then it would be fine because it can't be altered. Uh, so, so my question is, shouldn't the bank be signing oh, the PDF? Okay. Like ah, okay, putting, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Got it. So if you sign the PDF, yeah, you were unable, I mean, in this specific case, to alter the PDF, yeah. One last question, yeah. That's right. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the user experience uh, when the, um, the PDF is changed. Um, is there a latency before he click to download it and he received the modified uh, PDF? I think it's just a couple of seconds, maybe. Yes, yeah, maybe a couple of seconds. We did uh, see any kind of latency. The change is almost immediately. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay, a last question. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.